There's 3D printing, electronics, lasers, picture corner, and other stuff too. Alright, welcome back to Greg's Maker Corner. Today I'm going to be going over the Z axis and hope to get that built. The X and the Y are completed. I've got the belts nice and taut. Um, so everything's working pretty well, I would say. So I'm going to be using for build resources, uh, you know, of course the, the CAD drawing. I'm also going to be using a video. The video that I'm going to be using today is going to be on uh, the Nathan Payne video. I like how he kind of goes step by step through it. I'll also refer back to the other one, the Dahai da Zoo. Uh, but a lot of his, the parts are already put together. So those are the two resources that I think I'm going to be using on this. All right, here's the parts that I plan on using. I did paint, I did print them silver and black just to kind of contrast a little bit. So these will be going in the frame shortly. I'm doing the double Z, so I'm also gonna need these linear bearings. And then I've also got these Z couplers that'll be going on the motors and the lead screw. And of course you'll need some corner brackets for 2020. Um, I have four, I hope that's enough. And then I think these are just M5 screws. Okay, so here's what it's going to look like when you put it on. What I did was I put some 2020 T-nuts in here, threaded it with M5 by 10s, and then you just kind of sneak it in, and this end needs to be flush with the extrusion. It's so right about there, and then you pull that in, this little piece in, and then you... Um, Tighten it up. Okay, now I'm just going to repeat and add these pieces um, to each of the four corners. So I have the additional bar, put one here, one here, and one here. Okay, I ended up just doing the two side pieces and then I just slid the top one on this piece. And now I'm going to tighten it at the bottom. Okay, next up I'm going to put these corner brackets inside the four corners of the bed frame here are now in. They look like that. Um, I did end up moving this over to a flat surface because my working mat kind of is bowed in spots so it's a good idea and you want to make sure it's square and there's no jump when you hit the corners. Okay the next thing I'm doing is I'm just press fitting um, from the top down these bearings and there's a little piece that they kind of stop on so you don't have to worry about pushing them in too far. I'm gonna do that for both sides. So you need eight total. Okay, for this uh, next piece, the motor mount, or the, I'm sorry, the lead screw mount, I'm going to attach it to the front of the frame. I've got some M5 uh, 10s, 10 millimeter long with T-nuts. And you're gonna put them in as central as possible. And then you're gonna flip it over and do the other side. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. I'll probably check it anyway. All right, so I did that part. I'm gonna flip it over. Get some more screws. These not, these kind of slide in, so you don't have to pre-thread them in the part, which is pretty nice. So you can just kind of do that. I use tens because eights are a little too short for this part, but I did use eights for those brackets, and those fit pretty well. And then once you got it in there, here I'll just get the calipers out. Already put it down, but I'll check it anyway, see how close I am. So I got about 11.2. Yeah, it's pretty darn close, 11, about 11.2 on that side. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it. Just get it nice and tight where you can feel it. You don't want to, you don't want to rotate it too much because then you can crack the plastic and then that's no fun. It reprint the part. All right, so that side's done. Now I'm just gonna repeat on the other side. All right, next I'm gonna put in the lead screw uh, anti-backlash knot. So this is a Ziltec design. It's um, not brass, it's Delrin material. Basically, you're gonna put it in here. You're gonna put the screws in and then some washers on top. So I will get that going and show you when I'm done. 
Okay, I've got these pieces all in now, and I'm trying to get the nuts on. They are a little challenging. It's pretty tight working those nuts in there, but it can be done. Just it's gonna take you know take your time doing it. All right, I've got the nuts in, the screws in. As you can see here, it's pretty challenging getting those nuts on, but they're done. And this side is done as well. All right, I ended up using M25 screws and they fit just right, and they allow me to tighten up this little gap right here, which will hold the rod in place. All right, next up, I'm gonna insert these um, rod holders into the frame. You can see, basically, there, there's one here. You can't really see it, but there's another one here, here, and here. So that's where they're going. Okay, I've just laid them in here so you can see how they go. You can see the screw is kind of towards the inside. And now we got a few more inserts to put in, these remaining four pieces. And I also use M325s to secure this and get a good clamp. This lower, see it's kind of at an odd angle, so I think I'm going to drop this down and then um, tighten it up a little bit and adjust it. You can see kind of how it's supposed to work. Actually it seems to be working pretty well. I don't, of course I don't have the Z rods in there yet, or the Z screws. So I'll get those in, um, and then I'll have to raise this back up. I do have a, a jig that makes that very easy, and then um, I'll tighten these as well once I get them in the position. The next thing I'm going to do is tighten everything down. Then I'm going to raise the tops back up after I tighten these top pieces. Um, again, the reason I did that is because it'd be hard to tighten them with the, with these belts here. It is possible, but I just didn't want to mess with that. So I'm going to raise these up, um, but I'm going to keep them in position. The other thing that I need to do is put a T-nut in this slot, so I haven't done that yet. Um, so I might have to take the rods off to do that. Not a big deal. <clears throat> and then after that, I'll do the lead screws and then the motor mounts. All right, so I went ahead and I... Um, Resquared everything, raised this up about two and a half inches from here to here, um, which is right around 57 millimeters or so. The distance from the bottom of this middle extrusion to the top of this bottom extrusion is about 510 millimeters. So that was uh, pretty fun. Um, hopefully, I'll be done now resquaring the frame, especially now that I've got everything in there. One thing that I did do while I was checking it was I tried to get these as flush as I could. Um, after I squared them, things moved around a little bit, but it's still pretty much perfect. Not quite flush, but really close. And it'll, it'll be enough to keep them in there. Um, I did end up moving the motor mount underneath. So that's, and I needed pretty much every bit of that uh, 55 millimeters or so gap. So that is in there on both sides. Everything seems to be rotating pretty freely. You can see the top of the lead screw is just about flush with these. I think there's another, like a ball bearing part too that I can put on there. I just haven't yet. I'm not sure that I need it, but I probably will. Okay, here's a couple pictures of what the frame looks like with the Z-axis installed so you can get a good idea of how it should look.